We're going to install the rack and pinion drive onto a system. The rack and pinion drive has a lot of parts and I encourage you before you begin to check your bag and make sure that you have all of your parts in addition to the drive plate which will be wrapped separately. In addition to the rack and pinion system, you're going to need a motor as well. Now the first step that we have to do is to put the motor pulley onto the motor shaft. Now there are two set screws on the pulley and those set screws are 564 so you're going to need a 564 inch allen head and if your stepper motor has a shaft has a, a flat key in the shaft uh, make sure that one of these set screws is put into the shaft so we're just going to tighten these two down here so they're nice and snug as far as height on the motor uh, height on the motor shaft it doesn't really matter as long as you get a good portion of the shaft onto the motor pulley. Note that it will not go all the way down the shaft in most cases. Alright, now that we have our motor pulley mounted, the next thing that we're going to do is mount the motor to the drive plate. In order to do this, we're going to need the four 10 32nd inch hex nuts. They're the only hex nuts in the kit. Now if you look at the motor plate, there's four grooves. Uh, there's four grooves with recesses in them. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these nuts and we're going to drop them into the recesses. Now once you have the nuts in the recesses, we are going to position the plate over the motor and we're going to take the four 10 32nd inch cap screws and we are going to put them through the mounting holes in the motor, the four mounting holes, and we're going to put them through the mounting holes and onto the, uh, and through the nut and we're going to tighten all of these down. Now we don't want to tighten these uh, we, we don't want to tighten these all the way. You want to leave room for the motor to slide for now. We'll tighten them up later after we install the belt. So uh, put all of these motors on. You're probably going to have to turn the plate horizontal to do it. Um, but uh, put all these screws on and pause the video and come back and then we'll continue. Now that you have the motor mounted, the next step to do is to mount the spindle. So we're going to need the drive spindle and we're going to need the one inch shoulder bolt. Now, uh, and the other thing that we're going to need is the 3 8 inch split lock washer. Now what you're going to do is you're going to slide the shoulder bolt through the spindle and then put the split lock washer on the end. Then you're going to thread it through the 3 16th, the 3 8 inch hole right there. It's the only hole that you can thread it through. And you're going to tighten it down. With a quarter inch hex wrench. And so you're just going to tighten all, this all the way down until it can't go any further. And the last check is to make sure that the spindle still spins freely. Now we need to mount the belt onto the pulley system. And uh, what you're going to want to do is slip it over the motor pulley first. And you're probably going to have to bring the motor all the way forward to do this. Uh, this is why we wanted it loose. And then you're going to slip it over the bottom portion of the spindle. Now once you get this in place, we need to tension the belt. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the... We're going to pull... Take one hand and you're going to pull the motor tight with one hand. And then you're going to 
tighten these up. Now after they're tightened, the only thing that we need to do now is check the tension. And it looks like we're good. Now we're ready to go and now we're ready to go and mount the motor and rack and pinion assembly onto the rail. Okay, so now we have to mount this to the carriage. Uh, the carriage should already be installed on the gantry and the gantry should be tested and free rolling. Now in order to install this we're going to need the motor plate and we're going to need the short half inch shoulder bolt and the precision shim, it's the little tiny metal thing that you got in your packet. And you're going to place the precision shim over the washer, or over the shoulder bolt. And then you're going to slip it through the assembly and onto the threaded bolt, or onto the threaded hole in the carriage. Now that shim is important because without that shim, you don't have, uh, without that shim, there's no space in between the linear motion carriage and the rack and pinion. But by putting that shim there, we offset it a little bit and give it free space to pivot. Install the term, okay, start over. Our last step in the process is to install the tensioning system and to tension the rack and pinion up and properly. In order to do that, we need the two remaining screws, the spring, and the turnbuckle. Now the first thing that we're going to do is install the spring through the screw, the 3 8 inch screw, it's the larger of the two, and we're going to thread that into the hole opposite of the hole that you threaded the carriage in. Now this doesn't need to be threaded in all the way, it just needs to be threaded in partially. Um, as long as the spring can be in line with the turnbuckle, you're pretty good. Next, what we need to do is we need to loosen this turnbuckle. And by loosening, we need to loosen this turnbuckle so we can actually get the mechanism on without any tension on the machine. And so what we're going to do is the section that has the eye hook up here on top, we're going to hook onto the spring. I'm sorry, the tension that, uh, the section that has the open hook on the top, we're going to hook onto the spring. And then we're going to take the other screw, the smaller 5 16 by 1 inch screw, and we're going to put it through the eye bolt, and we're going to pick the carriage up, and we're going to put it uh, into the bottom most hole. If you put it into the top most hole, you won't get the uh, spring tension high enough to even touch the rail. So we're going to put it into the bottom hole here. And just thread that through until it almost pops through the other side. You don't need a lot. And then you're pretty much good. What you're going to want to do then is you're going to want to adjust these. You're going to want to adjust these screws so that your turnbuckle isn't hitting the isn't hitting the uh, millennium carriage and to do that you're gonna have to pull it out here. Now as a final step we wanna turn the we wanna turn this turnbuckle and we want to tighten it up against the rail. 
And um, now, I'll talk about tension here. For most applications, uh, wood, metals, the works, you're going to want a really tight tension on this trim buckle. If you're cutting basically foam and balsa, you can get away with a lighter tension. But uh, you're definitely going to want to put it a heavier tension to keep it from skipping off the rack. Because what happens here is this tension is the only thing that's keeping the pinion gear on the rack. So if you don't, um, if you don't tension it high enough, the gear could skip, the pivot gear could skip on the rail and then you're going to lose steps. The final step is to test the system and basically what you're going to do is you're just going to roll it back and forth and make sure everything is all, uh, make sure everything is aligned good and everything pivots well. Um, the tension adjust here, you might want to play with that. For now, I would rack it up uh, in your initial test. I would put it pretty high. And then uh, if you need to loosen it for, you need to loosen it for whatever reason, uh, you can do that in the testing. Thank you.